I don't know if you ever find yourself in the part of town where somebody comes up to you and says, Hey, handsome, you want to know about magnetic monopoles? So I was thinking, I was concerned about this, that maybe you would be approached in such a way, and rather than hearing about them from somebody with a needle in their arm, I thought I would, uh, you know, take a stab at explaining to you what the big fuss is about and whether we've actually got them now and all of the game is over. So, <laughs> here's a funny thing though. I was telling one of my students that I was going to make this video about magnetic monopoles and he said, Magnetic monocles? And he was pretty excited. So, there you go. <laughs> But, in this case, we're talking about magnetic monopoles, and you need a little bit of background first. You take some bar magnet, it's got north and south, and you slice it in half with a big green knife, and you're like, Ksh! and then you get a north over here, and a south over here, and you're thinking, wow, there's just one pole over there, and just one pole over there, but lo and behold, you get a south over here, and a north over there. So, you get more magnets by cutting your magnets. Awesome. It doesn't happen with dollar bills. But, you can cut this again, and ultimately you zoom in on this and you find that there's this chunk inside here called a domain, and inside that domain there are a whole bunch of little magnets, and they're all perfectly lined up. That's a domain inside of every bit of ferrous metal, and that's a, um, <clears throat> if the domains are lined up then you get something like a bar magnet, a uh, magnetized hunk of iron for instance. In this domain, you've got little spins, and each of those spins ultimately comes from an electron or a proton. So if I uh, zoom in even further, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say that that's zoomed in from there. And if I zoom in on one of these guys, I've got a magnet, and that's actually a north pole and a south pole right there. And the fact that it's a magnet comes from the fact that there's some spinning happening there, and it's quantum mechanical spin, but this is just, for instance, let's think about it in the case of iron, this is just one electron that's not cancelled out by all the other electrons, which is why my fingernail is not magnetic, because I've got a whole bunch of magnets pointing that way, and a whole bunch of magnets pointing that way, and some that way, and the equal amount pointing that way. Anyway, most stuff is not magnetic, <clears throat> because the electrons are all perfectly cancelling out their spins. But iron is one of those three awesome elements that has the, um, the net magnetic moment for each atom. But here you got an electron. The problem is it's got a north pole and a south pole. So even electrons themselves are dipoles, and you just want one pole, you want a monopole. Well, the trick with that is you could go back to Maxwell's equations from the 1800s, and Maxwell's equations forbid magnetic monopoles. Forbid is not really the white word, though. The white word. The white word? It's not the right word, because they just don't acknowledge magnetic monopoles because they haven't been discovered. So, in Maxwell's equations, for instance, one of them says that if you take a surface integral of the magnetic field out of uh, some area, out of any area, then you're always going to find that magnetic field never comes out of an area. So, I guess what that's saying is if there's some surface surrounding some volume, if there's magnetic field going out here, then an equal amount has to be coming in. So that means there's no source of magnetic fields that isn't also connected to some uh, uh, um, sink of magnetic fields. They have to go out and come back in by the same thing. But if you could find something that had just magnetic field, like uh, let's get you another surface over here. This is a, um, a Gaussian surface. If you found something where magnetic field was just coming out and no field going in, then you would have a magnetic monopole. And that would be really exciting. Here's the reason it would be exciting. There's the grand unified theory and super string theory, and these two theories of the universe predict that they ought to exist. You don't know something else cool about magnetic monopoles? The other thing that's cool about magnetic monopoles is that if we had them, oh gosh, there are so many cool things. If we had magnetic monopoles, then Maxwell's equations would be completely symmetric. And I know that you like symmetry, you know, when uh, somebody has a stroke and they're like happy on one side of their face and the other side of the face is all droopy and this guy got a nice bright eye over here and the other eye is like, Mwah. and their nose is all chipper on this side and the other side's like, Mwah. that's not symmetric. Nobody likes strokes, nobody likes asymmetry, nobody likes the fact that there aren't magnetic monopoles that have been found yet. Um, so here's the thing. If we also, you guys remember Paul Dirac, right? Dirac says in 1931, he says, 
hey, it would be really cool if there were a magnetic monopole somewhere in the universe. Because just a single magnetic monopole means that all electric charges would be quantized. Why would that be fun? Well, let's write that down what Dirac says. Dirac says, here he goes, just one magnetic monopole means all electric charges quantized. Why is that so cool? Oh, because all electric charges actually are quantized, and to have a reason why it has to exist would be a really nice thing. It would be really nice to be able to say, oh yeah, that's why electric charge is quantized, because right now we're sort of like, well, it is quantized, and I don't really know why. Okay, so, People will be getting really frustrated because we haven't found any magnetic monopoles yet, and uh, there are some suggestions for why magnetic pot monopoles seem to be really, really, really big. And now you're thinking, wait a second, aren't really big things easy to find? Not necessarily, because Einstein reminds you that E is mc squared, so if something's got a whole bunch of mass, and I guess when I say big, I mean really massive. Really massive things take an enormous amount of energy to exist. So creating one in a lab, I mean actually creating a physical magnetic monopole, would take an, an amount of energy that we haven't been able to dedicate to our um, super colliders yet. So we need to make a bigger machine, right? The biggest machine in the world, the most expensive machine in the world, is that LHC over in Europe, and uh, that's spinning things around and running them into each other and using the energy to create new mass, which is enabling us to study some things that can exist in the universe, but we need higher and higher energies to see more and more massive things. That's cool, remember the Higgs boson? Yeah, that's fun, we should make a video about that too. Okay, so you don't panic, but you're just like, man, it'd really be nice to find one. So there are some people who've been working on um, sort of magnetic monopoles, and the next video is gonna talk about exactly what they're doing, but I'm talking about actually getting a magnetic monopole, and what I mean is, if we find a magnetic monopole, it will actually be a distinct elementary particle. You know, you can make the effect of a magnetic monopole, and there's some really good wording. It says uh, that what we have made recently, the next video is going to talk about what Hall et al. have been doing. That's fun to say, Hall et al. Yeah. Okay, so what they've done is they've made a, they've made a, uh, basically a rubidium soup of, um, I guess you would call it a Bose-Einstein condensate, and that's when all the atoms are kind of working all together, and it's a very large quantum system. Really cool stuff. This is a happy Bose-Einstein condensate. And these are the things that can slow down light and ultimately stop it and stuff. Really cool stuff. But they've made a Bose-Einstein condensate, <clears throat> excuse me, that, quote, contains phenomena that are mathematically analogous to magnetic monopoles. So it's not a magnetic monopole because that would be a new type of matter with the E is mc squared and it would actually exist, etc. And it would also quantize all electric charges, which would be really cool. But we don't have one yet, but we have something that acts exactly like it. So it's like my two-year-old uh, is sitting in the house and, and I say to her, sweetie, I'm really hungry, and she goes and builds me a hamburger out of Legos, right? And uh, you know the only problem with hamburgers made out of Legos? They're not actually hamburgers. So right now we have a magnetic monopole, quote unquote, that's being built out of a Bose-Einstein condensate. It's not a magnetic monopole. It doesn't taste like one, it doesn't quantize all electric charges in the universe, but it sort of acts a lot like a magnetic monopole. So we call it a quasi-particle. And you can make these out of lots of things. Uh, what I mean is you can make quasi-particles of lots of other things, but uh, remember, the building block is ultimately the Bose-Einstein condensate, just like this hamburger is not a hamburger, it's built out of Legos. Good luck if you're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the wrong pole. Yeah. <laughs>